Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Welcome back to the show here on our Wellness and Weight Loss Wednesday. We're going to be exploring the topic. You may have already started hearing about it, about specific GLP-1 drugs. These are pharmaceuticals that are used typically in type 2 diabetes now being used for weight loss. And you'd be shocked at how many people are not qualifying for the drug, meaning their BMI or having type 2 diabetes, yet they are still being prescribed to it by their doctor. What I want to share with you are the actual results that people are getting from an unbiased perspective, but also share with you some of the side effects that your doctor may never share with you because they probably do not know. They haven't looked into some of these specific cases. So let's dive right into it right now. There is a class of drugs using something called semaglutide. Now, People are just referring to this as they're taking semaglutide, but they're typically not. They're taking a specific brand of a drug that uses a specific dosage of semaglutide that we'll get into. One is used with type 2 diabetes, and another is used with obesity, or just for general population, they're using it for weight loss. So this is a class of drug that I described before as a uh, incretin, or it's it's basically an insulin or mimetic. So what it does is it tells your body to produce more or the proper amount of insulin from the pancreas in order to be able to get and shuttle sugar, glucose, out of the bloodstream and into either muscles, the liver, or fat stores. And what it can do then is it can better regulate your blood sugar, help with overall inflammation, and as a secondary, it can act as an appetite suppressant, typically at a little bit of a higher dose. So, um, what it also does, and again, what we want to look at this is a specific class of drugs called GLP-1 receptor agonists uh, or glucagon-like peptide 1 receptor agonist. And what that means is that glucagon, so glucagon is typically being used to help balance overall blood sugar. We we store glycogen from excess glucose in the body. It can also be uh, through other factors as well, but basically you can use fatty acids, you can use amino acids, but what we do in the body is we take any excess energy, meaning glucose, from the bloodstream. And if it's not needed because you're not in a uh, fight or flight response, or you're not in a sporting event, or you're not in activity, it will say, okay, we're going to store the excess sugar, that's your glucose, right, inside of the liver cells, inside of the muscle cells, or inside of the body fat, right? And so the more excess energy you have, and again, calories in general, it can be stored as body fat. So what this drug does is it helps to shuttle it to the areas that are needed so the glucose isn't always in the bloodstream. That enables you to actually burn more body fat because blood sugar levels aren't elevated. Uh, And it also helps secondarily with blood pressure and uh, cardiovascular issues with high cholesterol. And that's actually another kind of off market uh, use for this drug as well that doctors will prescribe it for. Because if you can balance out blood sugar levels, you help with all metabolic forms of disease, your blood pressure issues, Issues, your cardiovascular issues, and your uh, type 2 diabetic based issues. So, the drug has actually been around for a, a fair amount of time. I, I Well, I don't want to guess at it, but it's been around for years now, years and years. And so it is just now for the very first time being marketed as a brain, an appetite-based suppressant to help with weight loss as well as balancing blood sugar. So this isn't injectable. Typically, it's in a pen. You're going to inject it in your stomach or your thigh or, again, wherever your doctor gives you that recommendation. I just want to share with you, of course, I'm not here to provide you with any medical advice, medical treatment plan medical diagnosis, or any of the medical-based advice. But I want to share with you before I get into the study, because I'm actually going to share with you the study, the dosage that were used, the results where people were getting. I want you to always remember that 
you can you can never get right something for nothing and so there are potential risks now i'm a natural health practitioner i'm an integrative health practitioner i'm a board certified doctor of naturopathy my background is in all forms of natural health, Ayurvedic medicine, traditional Chinese medicine, uh, bioregulatory medicine, but also backed up by functional medicine, lab testing, etc. So I know I believe in all forms of medicine and I'm here to help people. So if we have a pharmaceutical that is able to help people that doesn't cause other issues, then great. But I want you to know that this is not one of those pharmaceuticals. And again, I don't prescribe any pharmaceuticals, so I can't get this for you, nor necessarily am I recommending it because I'm always helping people to look at the underlying root cause uh, for their particular imbalance and weight gain or to type 2 diabetes for sure is one of those. So what I want to share with you is this though, and this is actually science-based as well, and then we'll get to the, the good. Like if you do decide to use this, I'm going to share with you the different studies that were actually run. So semaglutide injections may increase the risk of developing tumors of the thyroid gland, including thyroid carcinoma, uh, a type of thyroid cancer. Uh, laboratory animals who are given semaglutide develop tumors but it is not known if this medication increases the risk of tumors in humans. So again, I think that this is something for us to be cautious about, developing tumors, carcinogenic tumors, uh, cancer of the thyroid is not a good thing, especially since that thyroid gland as well is responsible for a lot of your metabolic rate. All right, other less severe issues is inflammation of the pancreas. Now, pancreatitis is still nothing to fool around with, but that's where the drug is acting on. The drug's acting on the, on the pancreas. There can be changes in vision, there can be drops in blood sugar. So all of a sudden, if you're having blood sugar of 110, 120, typically has a fasting glucose, and it drops it down to 70 or below, yeah, you might start feeling lightheaded and weak and forgetful and dizzy and all of those things. And of course, you'll want to speak with your doctor about that, right? Can cause kidney failure. That's a serious one, of course, as well. Cause uh, reactions, any injectable though could cause reactions. So we're just kind of stating the obvious there. Uh, and then also liver gallbladder based problems, more so with gallbladder uh, being an issue. So all of these have been shown, but there's one, and this is a big one, that doctors aren't telling you about. And I'm gonna to get to the study in just a moment because it is, it's a great study. But a lot of the participants and also doctors in functional medicine, meaning like they do more than just run your blood work, right, on an annual physical. And again, I'm not, I'm not trying to um, be patronizing to a doctor that just runs your blood work and gives you medication. But I just think that we can do better, right? I, in this day and age, we can certainly do a whole lot better than that. So here's the thing though. Uh, a lot of that weight loss was also coming from muscle. So when I share with you the weight loss stats and they're significant, much of that weight loss was coming from muscle tissue and maybe even some from other essential tissues in the body, tendons, things like that as well. Why does this matter? Okay, it matters for this reason. Your muscle is going to provide a lot of your metabolism. The less muscle we have and we start to lose it after about age 27, the less we have as we get older, the less strong uh, we are, less virile we are, the less energy we have, the less hormone we can help to produce with, with our exercise, but also less calories we can eat. We, can, we can't eat as much food with body fat alone. The more muscle we have, it's more metabolically active, which allows us to eat more calories because every pound of that muscle requires more calories than the body fat itself. So this is really important. You wanna keep muscle on as you age especially. And so it's just vitally important that there is no something for nothing. If you're gonna be using these specific class of drugs, then what we want to be able to do is make sure that people are exercising with weights, strength training, not just a HIIT workout, strength training to keep the muscle on on two, three days a week. Really, really important. Because that what happens is when you lose the muscle, you have to eat less and less calories every single day, whether you're on the drugs or not. So you have to be really careful with that. All right, so now let's get into the actual studies because there's good news, right? All right, so before we do that, there's gonna be brands brought up, brand names of drugs. One is uh, Ozempic. I don't know if that's the correct pronunciation. Uh, you'll have to check with, of course, your pharmacologist. Uh, and then there's Wegovy. 
and or Wegovy. It's W-E-G-O-V-Y. And the other one is O-Z-E-M-P-I-C. These are both injectables and they contain semaglutide. Ozempic is approved for type 2 diabetes. So the treatment of type 2 diabetes. Technically, it's not for the treatment of type 2 diabetes. It's typically an add-on. Uh, and then Wegovy, I'll just pronounce it Wegovy. You pronounce it however you like, um, is a higher dose semaglutide drug. So still injectable, but typically used for weight loss. They're not interchangeable. Typically, Ozempic is used for type 2 diabetes. And then the Wegovy is used for the weight loss. All right. So um, now that we have that out of the way, let's get into the studies. So when this went head to head, Ozempic versus semaglutide, uh, or I should say the Wegovy, I think you'll find this interesting. So in a clinical trial that compared weekly use of semaglutide of one milligram, which is typically the Ozempic for type 2 diabetes, and 2.4 milligrams of semaglutide, which was the Wegovy, it caused more significant weight loss than just the one uh, milligram. So basically, because sometimes there's an upper limit to these drugs, like where the effectiveness lies. But technically, the 2.4 milligrams allowed for much more weight loss than the one milligram of semaglutide, which is the azempic. okay? So uh, the one milligram, not gonna cut it the same as the Wegovy, which is the higher dose. Typically, it's once a week. That's what the, um, the prescription currently is. That might change in the future. Okay, so uh, let's get into it. This is the STEP study, and this is where all the details are. It's called, the STEP study is the semaglutide treatment effect in people, that's where you get STEP, with obesity. Now, obesity should be a key factor here and key word because it's used for people with obesity, which means a BMI of 30 or or above. If you don't know your BMI, you can find it at stephencabral.com forward slash assessments. They're all free. You can just literally scroll down to BMI and you'll be able to find your BMI. Okay. So in this uh, large scale trial, patients were receiving 2.4 milligrams of the semaglutide and they lost a mean of 6% of their weight by 12 weeks. So if we think about that, uh, what would that be, right? If we look at, well, let's look at the average person. Let's just say it's 200 pounds. All right, so we've got 200 pounds, which might be closer for many people, not all, to the scale of obesity. It obviously depends on how tall you are. But let's just use 200, and let's multiply that by point, uh, or by 6%, and we get 12 pounds. Okay which makes sense, right? So when we have uh, 12 pounds of weight loss in 12 weeks, so you might say, well, that's not that dramatic. And I would say, yeah, that's true, but a lot of these people were not able to lose weight for some time. They're not following a specific nutrition plan. They're not following a specific diet. This is people just using this drug and losing weight. So 12 pounds, obviously, um, you know, it's not not insignificant at all. Like it's, it's real weight loss. And then let's see, after... Uh, 28 weeks, so what's that, about double the time, let's say it's about six months, they lost 24 pounds. So they basically doubled their weight loss. So very consistently, right, let's look at what was that, a, well, they're very consistently, they're losing about a pound a week, right, not quite, it's 24 pounds uh, by week 28, but they're losing about a pound a week. Now, after 68 weeks, I've told you that this, these drugs have been around for some time now, and some doctors were using them, uh, it's called not off-market, off-label, for specific uh, use, other uses, such as weight loss, uh, they lost somewhere between 15% of their body weight and uh, nearly a third lost 20% of their body weight. So if we just multiply that by 200, we know it's 60 pounds. So 68 weeks would be, well, 52 weeks in a year. Uh, plus another 16 weeks, so that's like another four months or so. So about a year and four months, right? 16 months or so, I think that that probably makes sense. Right around there, uh, they were able to lose about 60 pounds. So let's just do the math on that, 16 divided by 16, and let's just see what the average was. It was about 3.75 pounds per month, or just about that one pound or so per week. So that's typical, the, the weight loss uh, in these specific studies. There was not a lot of diet and exercise added to this, so I just want to state that. Of course, you might be able to double your results if you added diet and exercise as well. Um, I will say that there was certainly a reduction in calories eaten, though. That is part of the 
I won't call it magic, but part of the appeal of these specific drugs is it affects the brain and it affects appetite suppression. I think that actually affects probably the gut as well, which is signaling to the brain too. And, and of course, there is a play between leptin and ghrelin because if you're starting to balance blood sugar and you're starting to tap into body fat, well, that then tells your body, oh, okay, we've got enough food. Let's use body fat as a fuel source. So what I want to share with you is the, the real uh, research, the unbiased research. You'll probably lose somewhere around 0.75 to one pounds per week, and that should last you uh, about a year or so. Again, you're going to lose more weight if you weigh a little bit more, and you'll lose less weight if you weigh less. So I, want, I told you I wanted to share this as well. Uh, one more part to it is this, is that they found during this study, the specific step study as well, that fried food, fatty food, and foods high in sugar cause nausea in a lot of people. So they actually got sick to their stomach. Really interesting, while this, they're on a semaglutide-based injectable. So now, all of a sudden, people are saying, well, I can't eat my favorite fast foods, fatty foods, high sugar foods, because it makes me nauseous. Well, for those people, they're gonna lose even more weight, right? Because those are the biggest culprits with weight gain in the first place, oxidized, <clears throat> excuse me, oxidized fats and processed sugar, for sure. Now, um, okay, so let's take it, and then I'm gonna give you, give you a quick recap, because there is an important recap, which, which is an unfortunate part of this, is that uh, there are two different forms of the drug. The lower dose was used, is used for type two diabetes. The higher dose is used for weight loss, typically with people with a BMI above a 30. Okay, next was, uh, depending on your weight, you'll lose somewhere, let's just say between a half a pound and a pound per week. That's pretty safe. And it looks like up to 12 months to 16 months, you can continue to lose the weight. Okay, very interesting right there. Some of that weight though is muscle loss, which means that you will have to eat less and less calories over time just to maintain the same weight or lose weight because you're literally wrecking your metabolism. Okay, another part is that there are some potential side effects. The side effects could be anything from thyroid cancer, not good, um, to pancreatitis, inflammation of the pancreas, kidney issues, gallbladder issues, uh, and more. So we can look at those. Uh, and then there is something called the rebound weight gain. People who stopped using the drug started to gain the weight back after stopping the use of semaglutide. Now, it's a little concerning because that means then you're gonna be on this drug for the rest of your life. I worry about that, especially since we know some of these side effects. If this was, oh, I'm gonna use this for six months and kickstart my uh, pancreas and metabolism, all these things, it doesn't seem to be the case. It seems that you need to stay on this specific drug. Time will tell, but uh, what I wanted to do was share with you the unbiased look at this and understand that there are always risks to these things. It does work, half a pound to a pound a week, is legitimate, especially without really diet and exercise. Again, you are going to limit your calories because there is an appetite suppressing part to it, uh, but it is working. Uh, but again, I don't want you to forget that there are always causes and effects in the body, and this can have some potential side effects. Let me know uh, if you've tried it before. Leave it in the comments. Let me know what your results were. Uh, if you're in the health industry, if you have any of your clients or patients that are using it, let us know what their results have been. Uh, of course, I appreciate you tuning in the show. If the show is helpful, do feel free to share it with anyone you believe it could serve. Take care, everybody. I'll be back soon with many more updates in this particular industry. Did you know that the body really only becomes sick or unbalanced in only two ways? Over time, you become deficient in vital nutrients and you also accumulate toxins internally and from the environment. As those nutrients diminish and you increase your total toxic load, your body then begins to show the first signs of dis-ease. It's actually quite predictable and the good news is that if we know how you began to fill up that proverbial rain barrel, we also know how to empty it to begin the healing process. I was fortunate enough to learn this ancient healing process from my mentor after suffering from debilitating diseases for close to a decade. It was only when I began to implement these techniques did I finally overcome my illnesses and go on to live a life of energy and vitality that I now enjoy. I'd like to share with you now what I discovered after traveling all over the world and how to combine the best of ancient healing wisdom with state-of-the-art science. Allow me to teach you exactly how I've been able to help over a quarter of a million people to empty their rain barrel and begin to transform their body and lives into what they've always hoped they could be. To get your copy of the international bestseller, The Rain Barrel Effect, simply go to 
stephencabral.com forward slash rainbarrel.